Okay, pretty small group here. Um, but I think at this point, we may get one or two other people, but this is probably, um, this is probably us. Okay, well, how, how many are in this group, uh, Emily? Um, it looks like we have eight, including us. So uh, six members. Okay, well, this should, this should be good. So uh, I'll open it up. I just, uh, you know, whoever wants to go first, any questions, any comments, et cetera. Brad's introduction is pretty much the overview that I would have given had I given it in this breakout section. So. If you want to uh, speak, I, I don't have any problem with everybody being un unmuted, so you don't have to keep hitting that button. Uh, and if you want to speak, just raise your hand, and uh, Emily can, you know, acknowledge that you're there. I don't see any hands yet. <laughs> Very quiet group. Okay. Um all right, I am an owner in Windswept too. We've had a villa, Lakeside Villas there for about 25, 26 years. Uh, we are spending more time there now uh, due to COVID and limits on other work abroad issues. Any comments or questions? I'm more concerned in that more things uh, be beneficial to all island, all island residents where sometimes it seemed they were concentrating behind the second gate. I was on the uh, earlier committee or discussion about the bike pass, which I fully agree needed much improvement in our section from not only widening, but uh, keeping branches and low hanging vines trimmed instead of getting slapped in the face and repairs where tree roots had long ago disrupted the um, topping for the bike path. I was also concerned with the access to the beaches. I knew that when we replaced the boardwalks, uh, good consideration was not given to the actual design of the uh, boardwalks from the angles that they were built that makes them very difficult for especially older people to go down them as they get covered with sand. And I was concerned about keeping things available as we age. The pool, I'm very concerned about that. And I like, I'm glad we're going to look at heating the family pool also. All right, I'll, I'll respond to those. Uh, number one, <clears throat> uh, the uh, enlarging the size of it and, and redoing the bike path that Brad just talked about. Yes. That, that's new. Yeah. We're also looking at, as you mentioned, uh, basically trimming all of the landscaping, et cetera, et cetera, on all bike paths, uh, as we do with the roads. You've seen Ross and Trees out at the roads doing their annual or biannual trimming of trees. We're looking at that. Uh, one major artery that we're looking at is the Alley of Oaks, which is very heavily traveled down toward the beach, and that's very confining the way the growth is around there. So that is being looked at. And this is not in place of the normal, uh, you know, bike path repairs uh, that we do as a matter of course, the usual budget. The good news about rebuilding this much of the bike path, which is about three and a half miles, is that's not going to need any work. So that money that's been allotted to repair bike paths will be able to be used on, on some of the other bike paths uh, that aren't so quite heavily traveled. Uh, as far as the boardwalks are concerned, we know about that. Uh, Deb Perlman, who's on uh, uh, this call with us, uh, her and her husband, myself, and a couple other people had a very informal task force to look at the boardwalks, particularly the ramps and the lack of ramps, and also other uh, accessible uh, yeah. issues on the island. Uh, and, and what we did, and what we succeeded in doing, at least partially at the time, was to look at the, the ramps, not from the beach side, but from the roadside because you might have a, a, a ramp every thousand feet or 1500 feet but they might might not be accessible to everybody on the street okay. side so 
that yeah. got approved. The uh, the sand issue, a lot of that's technical with DEC and, and uh, natural resources, et cetera, as to how far beyond the dune we can go. So that's sometimes why we have to do a Z coming down. Uh, but that we are looking at that. Uh, as far as the family pool is concerned, we've had many, many discussions. We discovered, fortunately, that the difficulty of doing it didn't exist. And the, uh, the cost, uh, because we have found a good place to locate the heat pumps, the cost, we believe, is going to come well within what we expect to pay. And I think that's the best of both worlds. We haven't voted on it yet. We don't have the final numbers yet. But I anticipate that's going to be done. That's my... Uh, that's my position. Hopefully we can uh, get that done. Thank you. I just thought that those were good um, things being worked on after that other meeting that I was on earlier last fall. Anyone else? Deb. Yep, sure. They, um, you answered, Dave, you answered a lot of the questions that I was going to bring up. So thank you for that. And thanks for having this uh, type of forum. It's really, uh, it's really wonderful to be able to uh, give some, you know, our ideas of concerns and, and, and other ideas. I, I'm pleased to hear that you found um, a, a workaround for the heated uh, family pool. I was concerned when there was a decision made about the quote adult pool. It just came out of nowhere. And I, I know a couple of you were uh, very, uh, uh, you know, you were, you were uh, aware of what the issue was uh, in terms of transparency and just coming up with uh, that kind of uh, an edict. But I, I really uh, am thankful that, that, that this has become much more transparent. Uh, I was concerned though um, at the last board meeting when it was brought up that there would be two new board spots and it seemed like it was a foregone conclusion and that it was just going to go through, well, these were what the votes were, we're gonna take the next two people. Uh, it didn't sit well with me in that, you know, I might have voted differently had I known I was voting for, for four slots. So I, I like that you've taken under consideration that there's a, a chance that it's not a foregone conclusion. Uh, expanding the board is is fine. I mean, if if the board feels that they need more people, that's great. Um, I think it should be a, a, a new election whenever it happens to be, whichever is the most cost effective um, is, is fine with me, but just so... Uh, people get a chance to vote on, on for candidates that, that reflect their values. And um, so that, that's, that's great that that's on the table. And uh, the last thing has really little to do with what you're talking about today, but it was just a quick uh, recap of yesterday on IKEA. A lot of very vindictive, and uh, I hate to use the word elitist, but very vindictive and elitist messages that went out regarding, quote, the putt-putt, um, I just wanted to, to say that should the Post and Courier get uh, wind of some of these messages that went out, it could really put Kia on a really bad light. And if, again, if I was on the, uh, uh, the, the city council for Charleston County and saw those comments, I might, out of just because of those comments, um, grant the permit just because we seemed so uh, uh, elitist and and I, I really thought that that was a, a poor way to go so that's just my uh, by granting to to get a few board members to to understand that uh, I don't think we're all like that and it was uh, it was disappointing but otherwise I really appreciate you're doing this uh, keeping the boardwalks and accessibility in the front of your minds is, is fantastic and um, I appreciate your you're doing this so thank you very much one of the things um, Deb with respect to uh, relating to this access issue is part of all of the uh, transitions on a new bike path work is going to make sure that you don't have that, that you have a smooth transition. And uh, as we discussed a couple of years ago, uh, it never really happened, but I'm going to push again to, to do that more, in more places where it really needs it because not, not just for, or what we would call handicap access, but just riding a bike on some of those, it's problematic. And that's one of the reasons why many people in certain areas don't want to ride in a bike path because of those transitions that are- Exactly, that exactly, are very much so. And, yeah, and, and, and in some of the areas where it's um, to be, you know, even into the sandcastle to be accessible, the, uh, the curb cut is still a little bit steep, but um, I know you guys are working on it and whatever is cost effective, but as, as long as it's in the front of your minds, that's, 
that's fantastic. So thank you. And, and as far as the uh, adding to the board, uh, I think the majority of the current board members are not against uh, adding two positions to the board. Uh, the big issue, as you mentioned, is uh, you know is it appropriate for the board to appoint two members? Uh, and it's been suggested we go to voter number three and number four. Uh, my position is that for an election. Uh, I don't know exactly how the numbers are right now. We're going to discuss that at the retreat. I think there's been enough public comment on that. Uh, I'd say 99.9% .9 of which is, you know, have an election. Uh, as you mentioned about voting, uh, had we had four people running for the board, we would have all had eight votes. And I would have allocated my votes differently if I had eight votes versus four votes. And I think that's critical. And, and I also think it's a little bit, if I were number one and number two and worked hard to get elected, then I found out I could have been number three or four and still gotten on the board. I, I, I wouldn't be happy about that if I was one of the two uh, that did get elected. So I'm hoping that's the direction we go in. And uh, um, I, based upon public comment, I think that's the way we're going to go. At least that's my position. Thank you. Jerry, Emily, you? Shall, I, shall I step forward? Yes, Jerry, go forward. All right, thank you. Um, Jerry Garrett, um, I uh, have a history that goes back to the 70s with Kiowa. My in-laws had a place on Inlet Cove, if I can. Uh, and in my own history, I can remember shopping at the Piggly Wiggly, which is now Ace Hardware. So um, having traveled up and down the, um, from the Panhandle of Florida to, to North Carolina, uh, I think the reason I'm here is that I um, want to make sure what made Kiowa attractive to myself and my wife, and we were actually married at the sanctuary, is to, is to understand how things run. And um, um, I, I just closed out a private equity venture in Kansas City. Uh, we bought in the seascape area not far from um, the pool, and I'm looking forward to it being heated because uh, I went there in January and it wasn't so. <laughs> so um, I, I, I hope to meet folks. I've met Mary Lou offline. Uh, I congratulate the board for having what I'd call focus groups because it will diffuse a lot of the energy that I noted on Monday. Um, and I do agree with the prior comments that we should make a decision on number of seats and then elect, not appoint. Um, I am most interested, Debbie, in looking into these comments uh, from IKEA. So I'm still learning how to uh, even get my kids a pass to get into the into the place. So um, I, I thank you all for your time and your commitment because it is a nice place. It's special. Uh, I I'm fearful of. If, you, if we're labeled elitist, it draws a lot of attention. I prefer it be special, and that's to everybody on the island. So thank you for your time. Uh, Jerry, one comment on the heating of the pool. You mentioned you went there in January. The heating of the pool is, is not going to be through the winter. What we're heating is we're expanding the season, starting earlier and ending later, because okay. heating the pools through the winter uh, is very, very difficult to do. It's very expensive because heat pumps alone can't really keep the pools up to temperature in, in really cold weather, which means you would have to add some propane heaters and put covers on it. And uh, uh, so for those months, we're, we're hoping to get like early March to December 1st and maybe even more. And, and we think that's that's going to be adequate. So I just want to clarify that. So you don't expect to come down here in February. <laughs> <That's good. laughs> But it's both pools, the family pool and the adult pool, pool then, right? Yeah, the adult pool is heated now. The family pool is uh, next on the list. Okay. All right, thank you. Could I ask what this IKEA is? That's a message thing I have not come across. It, it is a non-official website. Let's put it that way. Uh, it's monitored and it was formed by a few members here. And it's just a chat area. It's IKEA where if you Google it, you can get on, you can sign in. And uh, uh, a lot of it is, you know, I have a couch for sale or those type of things. It gets a little overwhelming sometimes with that. But there are a lot of good comments on there. But I agree with, with, with Jerry and Debbie that the people's attempts of humor don't come across as attempts of humor. They come across as, you know, we don't want those 
you know, Myrtle Beach people down here type thing. And uh, that's inappropriate. And you're right. You, you got to you got to assume when you're communicating online these days that it could end up in a newspaper and you have to you have to deal with it that way. And, uh, you, you, you know, <laughs> Jerry, I'm going to tell you, some of those things on there really disturbed me. But, uh, you know, it's uh, informally the board has agreed to stay off I care more because we don't want to be perceived as speaking for the board when we're on there. So uh, when I get off the board, you might see me there a little more often. Anyone else? Uh, just on the idea of expanding the board, I agree with that too. And uh, perhaps encouraging some of the people in our area and our groups to then run for the board and be active or at least have some committees that include specifically or reach out to get people from other areas of the regimes. Uh, I, I agree that uh, uh, with that, I mean, it just worked out. I think there's only one member of the board now that's, you know, before the second gate. Uh, one of the things that I noticed and I know a particular person where this is true. Had we known that we're going to expand before the election and we had four openings, I know of one person who would have run. Uh, but when it got up to 12 or 13 people, I know there were a number of people that said, you know, that's too many people I don't want to run. Four seats, I think we would have had some other candidates and possibly more from different areas. So that's why, uh, you know, we're in favor of another election uh, and, and so that people that didn't run the first time might consider running this time. David, who is the representative on the board that's not behind the second gate? Jerry McGee, he's in Inlet Cove. Okay. I'm who sorry. Was that? Was who sorry. was that name again? Jerry McGee. Jerry McGee, okay. He's on uh, this outreach program. He's one of the three, so he's got a, a different session going on right now. Hi, this is Eileen Olin off at 7 Greensward. I got, they, our room got crazy and it, it disconnected us. I just connected on. I don't feel like you have to repeat everything, but what was the main gist that is, is it, what was talked about that it is going to have, there are going to have another election. Is that going to happen the next time? Special election? What was, what was talked about? Well, on but, Monday, we decided mm -hmm. not to yeah. vote on that. Okay. The expansion is most likely going to happen. There's not a lot of opposition to adding two members. Uh -huh. uh, there's been a lot of discussion on, amongst the board, both in the public and private part of the meeting of how to do it. Some members on the board think they have the authority to just appoint two members. Other members of the board, I won't get into who or numbers, uh -huh. believe that uh, uh, even if the board has the authority to do that, we shouldn't do that. We should have an election. So uh -huh. we're going to discuss that at the retreat March 1st. And I'm hoping that the result is that we're going to have another election. We don't know if it's going to be a special election or if we're just going to wait till the next annual election next year. That's something we'll be discussing. So then the board will make the decision, not the community won't be in on that if it's going to happen or not, is what you're saying. Well, right here, right now is... This is the discussion. <laughs> want to know. And I haven't heard anybody yet that's in favor of just having the board appoint two more people. So yes. If you have an opinion on that, I'd like to hear it. Yeah, no, I, I agree with that, too. I mean, it was kind of, I, I heard kind of at the last minute before the meeting that, that this was going to, they were talking about adding. And like you said, I don't think anybody's objecting about adding. It's just, it just kind of popped up like the pool thing popped up. You know, where did this come from? Why is this happening now? And then it was kind of disappointed to hear that there was such an urgency on Monday. And we're like, well, what's the urgency? They didn't put it on. It, it was, you know, like I said, it, it's, you know, talk about transparency. And letting us know what was going on, it kind of went along with that. But it's good to know that a lot of them, you guys also feel that you can't just do that without discussing it. You know, you can't just appoint people. Like they said, well, just point the next two. No, that's not the way it goes. Um, and, 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 you know, why was it a necessary thing? Like, it had to be now. It couldn't be before they, it seemed weird that it couldn't be before the election that they decided that, that it kind of, the whole thing. And so then it was okay. Okay, can then let's wait and do it at another time. And I hope that's the way it's gonna go because it needs discussion, you know? And like you said, I don't think anybody's objecting to add people. It's just the way of doing it, you know, so. Well, Eileen, if I could have a, uh, if we were on a uh, 
face-to-face -face conversation. I could have some comments on what happened there, but uh, <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll just say that I agree with everything you just said and just about yeah. everybody that has commented on that, both Monday to me personally and emails I've received. Mm -hmm. uh, that's pretty much um, the uh, consensus from the community so far. Well, that's good. And, you know, and it was nice to see that when we do have a, you know, when we, we can communicate like with these meetings and with the one on Monday, it opens up a whole new thing on Kiowa. You know, like you really feel like you have an input, you know, and, and I hope that continues because we need it. <laughs> you know, we are a community. That's what it is. It's a community. So I appreciate it. One of the things that, you know, COVID's bad, but some good things have come out of COVID. Uh, one of them is so much real estate got transferred. We got uh, contributions to reserves. We're budgeted in a million three. We got almost four million. Mm. Uh, that, that's we can use for infrastructure. But secondly, so many people have gotten to Zoom meetings and are not intimidated by them anymore. That when we have these public type meetings, you know, people that are not here, it's a lot easier for them to participate both at, you know, at uh, board meetings or these outreach meetings or any other type of meeting. And our response has been uh, uh, really, really good and more people are getting involved. Uh, one of the reasons, just to let you know why there's a consideration to expand the board. The logical reason is we're getting so many different things we need to do here on Kiowa from all of this input. And with a few more people on the board, we can identify board members to, to assume certain tasks and to, to chair certain uh, goals, et cetera. Uh, because we do have some part-timers uh, you know, on the board and every once in a while somebody can't attend. So uh, nine members would effectively be uh, you know, eight elected members. One, uh, obviously the, uh, the partners by covenant have a uh, member on the board. Another issue on the board is, and I advocated for this even before I got on the board, is that the resort should have a say on the board. They're the biggest payer of uh, Kika fees on the island by far, over almost a million and a quarter a year that they pay. And, and they, they want some input. Right now we have Roger Warren, who is the head of, Kika, of the resort, He's on the board as a non-voting member. His input has been great. And it's been great both ways. Uh, he learns what we're doing and he's very open about what the intentions and what the goals are of the resort. So we learn an awful lot about the resort that we weren't learning before, which has been very helpful to the board. And his insight about certain things has been very helpful. So whether the board, the resort member votes or not votes, the input's been great. And another question, is it, you know, because it's always in discussion with a lot of people. When you have the board, you know, is there a way of, you think in the future of, that there'll be representation from the different <laughs> regime? A, a person from the, each regime gets, gets in, from each area gets in, because that would make it more unified. You know, there would be representation all over. Is that ever looked at? Because I don't even, I mean, I don't know. I haven't looked to see, but I, I gather you're not, it's not getting represented by each of the regimes, regimes, you know, and, and areas as much as maybe it should be, because then that would be more representative of the whole community. Is that ever discussed, I wonder? Well, that would require a covenant change. And, and oh, okay. To get into uh, anything but at-large voting, I think would be very difficult to do. Okay. Uh, because for instance, let's say we wanted, we said we want a member from a regime, a condominium regime. That would have to be basically a separate election. And then if we said everybody, you know, uh, in different areas, I, we would never know how to exactly break that out. So I, I think the big thing, which we learned this year with 13 participants voting, that it, it, I think it's up to the different areas. For instance, if you, if you have a, a regime group, you know, you might encourage one of the regime uh, people to, to run for the board. I think that's about the only way we'd be able to do it without major, major changes in the covenants and bylaws. That would be great. I mean, if that could even be brought out as to let people know that that's a possibility that I didn't realize that that would kind of be crazy. Um, but if it was known to say, hey, if you want to be representative, represented, get together and, and have someone going and going. I think that would be a great idea. Eileen, where do you live? I live on Greensward. I live in the historic district. <laughs> <laughs>
Well put. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think the way the voting is, because, um, you know, I, let's talk about not empty lots, but let's talk about, uh, uh, you know, you get two votes per empty seat. So, you know, this time where we have two people running, you have four votes. Well, if, if you got regimes together, and I don't know if there's a regime organization, which they probably should be, but if you got the regimes and they had a particular candidate they wanted, if they all got together and said, all right, we're going to throw all of our votes towards Harry, mm -hmm. Harry's got a good shot of winning. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, and, and I think that's that's the way it can be handled if a particular group wants representation on the board. I think that would be, well, that would obviously be the in a covenant change, and I don't think that would ever pass. Mm, okay. Um, I just want to point out that Debbie's had her hand up for a while. Go, Deb. Yeah. yeah, I just had a similar similar question, um, but I, about the makeup of the board. But um, in the bios, I usually try to choose. I look at who's on the board, and then I try to choose to make sure that it's not all Keough Island club members or all you know certain other kind of members i like to have sort of a, a of a makeup so that's kind of how i decide on on the vote um but if we could have i, I suppose uh, if we could know it, sort of where people are from um it's also good to have some that are permanent um, residents and some that are part-time residents and and that usually comes out in the bios and that's you know that's kind of how i um i look at at the vote but I, i'm glad you brought up the the point about having what the issues are about having people from different areas on the island represented kind of like a town council that has wards um yeah it does make make sense that it would be a little bit more difficult in in this sense so thanks for thanks for bringing that up but that was my uh my one question oh and the other thing i just want to mention to those who don't know about ikea um we've sold furniture in about 30 seconds if we're ever you know doing anything so it's one of those it's it's actually has a lot more positive uh uh angles to it than than negative so um do do sign up for it because uh you might get some good deals on furniture or you might just learn something about something going on on the island that that's that's interesting so it, it i didn't want to show it as all negative so thanks that's it thanks i may have something to put up next week <laughs> anybody else i mean and just one more thing about the pool <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> the other hot topic. Um, so I know it's coming up to talk about again because when they open up the what, the, what to do about the adult pool with the heating and who they're going to allow it in there, is that again going to be decided by the board only? Because because of I know that they put out that questionnaire and then people had questions about the questionnaire, um, or is that just going to be decided, you know, by the board alone? Well, the board, it, it's the board's decision to make it mm -hmm. time because it got elevated to the board, okay? okay? The board did not participate in the original decision to allow families to the upper pool. Uh, yeah, we're going to be discussing whether or not we should continue allowing families to use it this spring, knowing that we're hopefully going forward with eating the family pool or leaving as an adult pool. I'll, I'll be honest with you, there's a split on the board on that. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know whether this board or the next board is going to vote on that. Uh, uh, I, I will tell you, my position is adult pool. That's been my position all along. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, so uh, I don't know where that's going to fall with the vote, but it's, uh, it's going to be discussed. In, in it. The way I look at it, the most it's going to be is this spring, and then there won't be any need for it. There's no way we can get the family pool heated for this spring season. It just can't happen logically. Mm. But you definitely think that that, I, I, I guess I missed, you know, the beginning of the discussion because I wasn't in on, but um, the, they are going to go ahead with the, the family. I think they you said at the beginning, they said at the beginning because the cost wasn't as extraordinary as they thought it was going to be. So then they decided it's something they can do. So it is going to be done. The family pool will get heated. Well, definitely. I'll, let me give you some history on what happened here. <clears throat> And I'm not pointing any figures at anybody. I'm just going to state facts here. Originally, there was a group of people that came to the board and, and advocated for heating the family pool. And there was a lot of, uh, I would say, women. There were quite most of them were women. A lot of people that liked doing their laps. They wanted to stretch out the season, etc. We were told at the time that the 
technological difficulty and cost of heating the family pool was going to be out of reach. Mm -hmm. So in order to, uh, shall we say, accommodate the people that really wanted a heated pool, uh, it was really easy to do the adult pool. It came in a lot less expensive than we thought. And that encouraged us, obviously, that hopefully the, the uh, family pool would be. So when the controversy came up, you know, it was uh, contentious. But most of the people that weighed in on it, the community, were wanted to keep it a family pool. Uh, that's the way I looked at it. And it wasn't like 90 to 10. It was a majority. But uh, the board voted. Five to two to to allow the family in there after the controversy came up. Two of us voted against it, uh, and uh, uh, so the logical thing to do, particularly seeing with the shall we say increased funds we received this year, the logical thing to do is to just heat the other pool because we now discovered technically it's not a problem, and cost-wise it's not an issue. So we haven't definitively said do it because we want to get the final numbers in, but I believe it's going to happen. That'll take care of a lot of problems. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. Anyone else? Go ahead, Kevin. Kevin. Hey, David. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, it's the first time I've joined any of these committees. Uh, I appreciate you know, the outreach. Um, I own a couple of places. We own a couple of places in the uh, one off Bittern Court as well as. Uh, one of the uh, villas in Winslow. Question has to do more with the process for the budget, since we've gotten a pretty large cash influx with this, uh, as you mentioned earlier. Uh, what is the process to determine how much you keep in reserve and allocating the spend? I miss Monday's I, meeting. Yeah, I, I believe right now that there is a reserve fund that's got to be a minimum of $500,000. Uh, with respect to the, shall we say, the windfall from the CTR money, CTR money can only be used to maintain or improve existing infrastructure by covenant. So we can't do anything new with that money. That's, you know, repave a road, heat the pool, because I consider that an improvement of existing infrastructure. Uh, and if you recall, we had a, uh, a, a vote on the flood mitigation project last year. And the reason we didn't have a vote on that, because that was all new infrastructure. We couldn't use the CTR money for that. And that passed overwhelmingly, as you know, 82% 82, 82 voted in favor of that, and that project's ongoing. So, uh, yeah, there is, there is a requirement for reserves. I, I'm not into decimal points with respect to the finances. I will tell you that our new board member, Alex, is on the finance committee. And uh, he, one of his goals and one of the reasons he ran for the board was to expand the knowledge the community has about the budget. Uh, as you know, we're pretty much on a fixed income. Uh, you know, we have assessments and then there's other income that doesn't vary that much. So, you know, every year when we start off, we start off with X number of dollars. The budget doesn't change that much, but with the CTR money we're looking at, should we develop a, uh, a larger hurricane or storm budget, which I think we probably should. Uh, people are getting tired of every time we have a windstorm, you know, you get a little bit of a special assessment. So, you know, there's a philosophical difference there. Should we, should we pile, you know, pile up a bunch of money so we don't have to do an assessment? Uh, the problem with that is if you deplete that fund, you got to build it back up again. So we're going to be paying either way, but uh, we need more transparency both to the board and to the community about what items are in the budget, things like that. What do we have in reserves? What are we doing with the CTR money? Uh, you know, and uh, uh, you know, what differentiations there are. This, this year, uh, our budget was, uh, uh, we underspent because of COVID. We, we made a decision. We didn't know how it was gonna impact us. We made a decision to do some cost savings uh, and it worked out very well. Uh, so it's a, a, there'll be a, a, a more open and more analytical process for developing the budget going forward. Thanks. Emily, can you activate my chat? It says disabled. Emily, you muted. Thank you, David. <laughs> uh, I appreciate that. I should, uh, I should be aware of that at this point. Um, 
let me see if I can reach out to you in the chat, Mary Lou, but it may be something about your particular setup. First time I've encountered this. I just sent you a chat. Were you able to see it? I see it, yes, but there's no place for me to respond. Not at the bottom of that. No, it's disabled down there. I am really sorry about that. I actually do not know how to troubleshoot that. Um, let okay. me see if I can find some information for you. Okay, thank you. I've never had this show up before. I haven't seen that either, actually. <laughs> Any, anyone else have any questions or comments or about anything? Just I one just, quick thing. Go ahead. Um, it's just about the uh, the committees that there's a, a committee being formed just to be advise advisory on the sandcastle, and I I uh, I, I I highly recommend that, and um, it doesn't have to be anything. It just just to be able to recommend things to the board, I think it's a really great idea, and some people are really interested in doing things not that cost money, but that can they can just help make it um, a, a more a congenial place and some place that m more people know about. So I, I just was uh, in favor of that committee. That, that's definitely going to happen. As you know, there's a group of people that have suggested how to set up that committee. Uh, most of their comments, I think all their comments are great comments and how they want to set it up. The board's going to discuss that at the retreat. Great. Uh, I think what we're going to Number one, should it be a standing committee or a task force? I vote for a standing committee myself. Uh, the number of people on that um, uh, will be discussed. Uh, my position is I'd like to see a member of the board to chair that committee. Mm -hmm. uh, as you know, Kay, who runs the amenities, is retiring. So we're going to be replacing that permit. That, and I would like to see the committee in place to participate in that process. Mm -hmm. And... and uh, I think the, the way to uh, fill the committee, there's been a lot of discussion about that. All of our other committees, uh, for instance, the finance committee, they take applications, see if people know about finance, et cetera, et cetera, and there's a process to choose those people that the board approves. Same thing with the HR committee. They want people on that committee that you know have some experience in human resources. Uh, and, you know, My position is we should open it up for applications uh, and make sure we have people on the committee that know enough about the, the amenities uh, to, to be able to participate knowledgeably in that committee. Now, the, the, uh, the group that put together their, uh, their idea of what the committee should be, they want to keep call it the Sandcastle Committee. I want to call it the Amenities Committee because the person in Kay's position, Kay, right now, <laughs> She's in charge of all of amenities. That includes the Sandcastle, uh, Red's Bluff, Cinder Creek, Eagle Point Boat Landing, et cetera. And these are amenities that are very important to a lot of people. So I think that should all come under one umbrella uh, for two purposes. One, because they're all amenities. And two, you can't look at just the Sandcastle for the purpose of spending money without including in the budget, if you're going to be advising on that, uh, all of the other amenities. So that's going to happen. I don't think there's any doubt about that. And uh, overwhelmingly, again, just like the election process for next two people, overwhelmingly, everybody's saying we need an amenities committee. Uh, and uh, so that, that's going to happen then. Excellent. Excellent. I'm sorry I called it Sandcastle. I was just, I understand. Everybody does that, but it's most of the controversy about the amenities is surrounded around the Sandcastle. There's not been much controversy other than a three or four years ago about Red's Bluff. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. All right, thanks. And, and again, I just want to thank you, the board, for doing these sessions. I mean, this has been really well done. And like you said, I've gone to some meetings, but it's a lot easier to do it this way. You know, you could do it from home and get a lot more people to participate. And I think it's great. And I really value it. And I appreciate you guys putting in the time to do this, to break it down. Uh, one other thing. Uh, uh, I'd like to uh, at least get out there is 2020, the COVID year was a very, very strange year for a number of things. For occupancy, we had 12 weeks without renters, et cetera. And there was a lot of overcrowding on the bike paths, on the beach, on the boardwalks, because so many people were here. 
Uh, we're hoping 21 comes back a little more to normal. But uh, I encourage anyone that sees any violations of the town's short-term rental ordinance to make sure they get to the town and talk about that and, and, and file a complaint so that we have a good database as to what the real problems are, if any. Uh, you know, too many cars in the driveway, too many people in the unit, uh, people trying to rent without getting their license, et cetera. Uh, so if you see that, please report it to the town. And, and, and the town does communicate with us about of those complaints. So uh, I, I'm hoping to get back to 21s a more normal year and we don't see that big spike in issues on the, on the short-term rentals. David, uh, one question is, Jerry, the, the, what is the um, process to see if you, these committees you've mentioned? Are they listed on the website? How do you, uh, if, you if you're interested in participating, I mean, why? There will be, for the amenities committee, there will be an announcement that you'll get from staff saying, you know, we're going to have interviews for the amenities committee. That's what they do every year with the, uh, in fact, they're interviewing uh, people for the open seats on the finance committee. I think 15 people applied for, I think, I, I, get, I don't know how many seats. Uh, the HR committee is new. Uh, there's going to be some discussion on exactly what the HR committee should be doing, et cetera. It, uh, but any, any replacement on there, it, you'll, you'll be notified <clears throat> through the emails of the process of selecting them. And I, I believe on the website, Emily, you, you can look at, Get information on committees there, correct? Yes, absolutely. Um, actually, if you go to, um, let's see, if you go to About Kika, um, in that drop down, you'll find the board and then board and committees, and you'll find information like a brief summary on what each committee is. And then below that, there's contact information so you can reach out to the staff representative or the chair, depending. Anyone else? We're getting, we're right at about 45 minutes from when we started. So uh, any final comments or questions from anybody before we go back to the main group? Thank you, Dave. Thank you, Emily. Okay, Emily, Thank I you. think we're ready to go. Okay, well, I think um, it looks like some of the groups are hoping to finish up by two. So I think we may have a little more time. Okay, come on, more questions, more questions, anything. <laughs> You're a glutton for punishment. <laughs> but does anybody want information on the PGA? Yes. 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 All right, here's it, it, the latest, uh, and I kind of got it from the horse's mouth anyway. Uh, right now, it's going to have public participation. That's a definitive one. Uh, it's going to be more people than, for instance, they had at the Phoenix Open this past weekend, more people than they're going to allow at the Masters. They don't know yet if it's going to be everybody. Uh, you know, when I say everybody, that's got like 30,000 people. I don't know if they're going to allow that. They're talking with the state, the PGA, all of the powers that be in discussing that. But it's not going to be a non-public uh, event. Uh, I think... It, it, the numbers I'm hearing is somewhere maybe around 10 to 15,000. I'm not too sure on that. Um, but uh, uh, that, that's, it, it's not going to be closed. What I don't know is if they don't honor every ticket, whose ticket's going to be good? Uh, I, I, there's going to be some, I see people are buying and selling tickets online and they don't know if they're going to be able to go or not. And the original person is going to get the refund. So I can imagine some, uh, mm -hmm. some discussions on that. So uh, that's what I don't know. But it's going to, it's going to be open to the public. And uh, we're really looking forward to it. I've got uh, season tickets in Kansas City I could use. And I, I think eventually they'll, they'll let us use them next year. So maybe that'll be the same case. But Keo would benefit from that. Um, I do have a, you know, I apologize. I'm new to this process. Um, volunteering do they need volunteers i mean the only i don't even the only places we've gone through they've said everybody's they got more volunteers than they can stand do they need any help well they they had a, a process i think it was almost a year ago where yeah. people applied for for positions 
and uh, they went. I I just anecdotally, there was one one committee of four people in that committee, but one group of four people that were going to get up early in the morning to go around the course and make sure all the ropes, the, you know, the uh, spectators' ropes were up and straight and all in the right place. And I wanted that badly because I'd be done by seven o'clock in the morning. I could watch the and. You could hit a button to sign up for committees. I hit that button right on the right time. And, and in that millisecond, all four of those positions were gone. Uh, so the committees are all are all filled. Um, I know there's waiting lists for certain things, but uh, I ended up getting the uh, a position of driving the players' families around to get them to the course and back to wherever they're staying. So I, I, I'm interested in that. I'm interested in that because I'm sure the wives of all of these players are going to need transportation around the outfit. Yeah. Uh, nice to know it's covered. I think there's almost 3,000 uh, volunteers. It's, it's a huge great. number. I, I didn't realize how many volunteers they needed. And you actually pay for it. I think it's like $236 to be a volunteer. Yeah. <laughs> Don't you get two shirts, two jackets, and a hat? One jacket. One jacket, yeah. Two, yeah, two shirts, ah, one jacket. Baby, now we know, okay. Uh, Maybe he's like that. But the good news for the volunteers is whatever public group they allow, part of that group is the volunteers. So if you're a volunteer, you're definitely going to be able to watch the tournament. You won't lose your ticket. Well, if you see somebody walking up from the ocean, you know, that's not me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, just try getting out from the ocean side, see what happens. <laughs> <laughs> We're getting close. We are. We should be getting an invite back into the rooms, or probably a, we'll probably get like a minute or so warning Leah's going to send out before, like, you can either go back into the main room or it'll just pull you in there if you wait. So I, I, I have one quick question, Lee, that I want to mm -hmm. ask. As part of the amenities, one of the things that a few people have mentioned to me that they, they are not in favor of, you know, they have weddings on the sandcastle. And sometimes on a weekend, people have a wedding and people are around the pool enjoying themselves. And they're like at two or three o'clock, they're told we have a wedding coming up. We, everybody's going to go. Personally, I think something that's something that's going to stop. What is everybody, anybody opinions on that here? Yeah, no, I, I, I encountered that sometimes. I usually go early or late, but I heard that a lot from people. I think you're, you're right. It's like, it's our pool and I understand they have a wedding, but that's ridiculous. <laughs> and that's kind of get. I heard a lot of complaints about that. Tell us how you really feel, Eileen. Mean. <laughs> yeah, I'll tell you if you really want. <laughs> well, you know what it is? I guess, you know, I guess it's, it's a, like a little, it's a little juggling act because I know you need, they need money and that's why they have these events, but then sometimes it seems to overpower us, you know, and we feel like we're not part, you know, it's like that's more important than our satisfaction, you know what I mean, with, with different events and things. So yeah. it's, it's, it's tough. It's Take tough. It to the Can there be a, a limit to the number of events and then the ability to go elsewhere, like be grandfathered into the night heron pool or something like that, or the night heron okay. gym, just for those, those times. But no, you have five events and that's what they're going to be. And you know, the dates, uh, I mean, the oh. sanctuary does this and you know they get a lot of money for it and well the sanctuary does it because they're in the business of hosting weddings and having yeah exactly well, i mean I, I i just wondered if whether or not if you want if you're able to do like three or four and know in advance if you can you know generate revenue but uh, otherwise it's you know i don't see why we have to do it why do they build the pool because don't they have the event upstairs the wedding yes house? but they they not all weddings, but they want to be able to have a cocktail party out around the pool and take pictures around the pool, et cetera. So it, it's something that's going to be discussed. The, rev the revenue isn't the issue. We're not making a ton of money. Uh, it's more of a, it's more of a uh, convenience for our members to have a venue that's not going to cost $500,000 to have a wedding, and I don't have a problem with that. Uh, but one of my concerns is, you know, many, many of our members come down for long weekends, and they're at the pool, mm -hmm. and, and these, the times where they're shutting down the pool is on weekends. Yeah, and, uh, it, it doesn't work. What do you do it without shutting down the pool and using it as a as your indoor um, facility for catering? And maybe. Did but you yeah, get I, one, get 
Emily, did we get our one minute warning yet? Um, I have not gotten any warning, but I did just <laughs> speak with Leah. I think we're about to get out. Hold on. Can I ask what happens when we reconvene with everybody? What is this? It's just like a summary of what's, what's going to happen when we all come back. Uh, not much, I don't think. <laughs> <laughs> we have cocktails. No. <laughs> yeah. Brad, I, I think Brad will have a little something to say and, and we'll be mm -hmm. done fairly soon, I think. Okay. Eileen, you mean you're not drinking now? I don't drink really, so I always think <laughs> it's I would say that. <laughs> if I if I have a drink in the afternoon, I'll fall asleep. <laughs> okay. So it is about one minute and then we'll be back over there. We are running a little behind. They must be awfully talking about the other two. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> uh, one other thing, just uh, I don't, it hasn't been published yet, but uh, it looks like we're going to be repaving Governor's Drive from the second gate to the first flyway soon. And, that, and there's uh, quite a few other road projects we're, we're trying to get done also because. Uh, uh, there's a few roads that really need it, but that section of road, it was scheduled to be done in 2022, and we decided to accelerate it to this to this year, get it done before the PGA, and uh, then all of our main roads would be in great shape. This isn't related <clears throat> to anything, but how much more building is going to be done? I mean, this has been an unusual year relative to construction, usual two years, I think at least in my experience here, there's more trucks on the island than I've ever seen. Yeah, there's been an average of close to 100 houses under construction. I, I'm not sure there's X amount of lots that are still being sold, mostly out of Ocean Park. There's quite a few lots that haven't been built on. I anticipate it's going to stay pretty strong. Welcome back, everyone. We'll give it just a minute to make sure everyone makes it over. Looks like everyone has rejoined. Okay. Well, thank you all. Uh, I hope, uh, I know we had a good discussion in my group and I'm sure you did in yours as well. Uh, obviously this isn't the end of the discussion. Um, we still wanna hear from you, even if we don't have specific meetings. Uh, you can contact us um, either through the general board email or if you look on the website, each of our board emails uh, is up there and then uh, Alex will be getting a, a board email as well, as well as uh, um, Beth will too. Um, and uh, you know, I think I speak for all the board members that we want to hear from you. Um, and uh, you know, again, this is the you know the continuation of a conversation, but it's not the end of a conversation. So um, thank you all for taking the time to um, share your thoughts. It's important for us to hear from you. Um, and uh, I wish you a good day. Anybody else have any thoughts in closing? Um, no, uh, Brad, we had a terrific conversation. Uh, just quickly, I think the three things that, that came up were certainly a discussion about the board and expanding the board and how that was done. Talked a lot about the reserve fund um, and some things, some ideas and thoughts about how that worked and what might be uh, considered. Uh, and we also did a recap on, you know, the bike path and other projects that are underway and also board representation of different areas. And so we had a good discussion and people participated. So I think it's from our point of view, uh, in our little group, uh, we think it was a nice chance for people to be heard. We covered many of the same topics, uh, including, but also the, you know, Sandcastle as well. Uh, extensive discussion about that, which was good. Yeah. Okay. All righty. Well, thank you all. Thanks, everybody. Appreciate it. All right. Thank you.
Bye-bye.